Thank you very much, uh, Sonia. So we had a really interesting uh, sessions this morning already. Uh, like Sonia said, my name is Sebastian Garnier. I work for uh, AXA Consultants and I'm also linked to, the, to uh, Housing Europe. And I will be moderating uh, this uh, quite amazing uh, panel. Uh, I, I must say <laughs> a lot of experience here. And we are going to discuss uh, really what are now the repercussions of all this, this learnings from this morning, but especially also the work that has been done in the housing uh, partnership for EU regulators. What can they bring home from uh, those three years of, of, of work, really? And I was involved in the first stages, so I know a little bit what has been uh, done and uh, how much coffee indeed uh, has been served. Um, so I want to uh, give the first word actually uh, to you, uh, Christian. Welcome uh, as well. I think you will speak in German, if I'm not uh, So put on your headset, please. Um, I have a very... Uh, simple question, but also a difficult one. We have just heard how important affordable housing and social housing is actually for the lower income groups, but also this middle uh, class. And you're a representative uh, of uh, the Austrian Union of Municipal Workers. So I guess for your uh, membership, for your members, it's very important to keep those cities uh, uh, available and, uh, uh, and affordable uh, to, to live, but also to work there, actually. So what is housing for all? What does that mean for you? Yeah, zunächst einmal, uh, ja, ich spreche auf Deutsch, uh, I speak in German. Um, herzlichen Dank für die Einladung und uh, uh, schönen Nachmittag auch uh, von meiner Seite. Ja, mein Name ist Christian Meidlinger, ich repräsentiere die uh, Gemeindebediensteten uh, österreichweit, aber natürlich auch uh, wienweit und wir haben, uh, oder ich habe sozusagen in meiner Funktion hier ein bisschen eine doppelte Betroffenheit, uh, weil uh, auf der einen Seite geht es natürlich um leistbares Wohnen uh, im Rahmen der Daseinsvorsorge, auf der anderen Seite sind viele Mitarbeiterinnen und Mitarbeiter der, 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 der Abteilung Wiener Wohnen, des Unternehmens Wiener Wohnen, auch Mitglieder in unserer Gewerkschaft und habe daher natürlich das Vergnügen, hier beide Seiten sehr gut zu kennen und darf ich auch kennen. Natürlich geht es in erster Linie darum, dass Wohnen leistbar bleiben muss und vor allem auch für Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmer die kein so hohes Einkommen haben, auch äh, leistbar bleiben muss. Und äh, wir kennen das ja aus vielen Städten in äh, Europa, nicht nur Europa, eigentlich ja auch weltweit, dass durch äh, fehlendes äh, kommunales Engagement, fehlende äh, Möglichkeit, dass die öffentliche Hand investieren kann, viele Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmer gezwungen werden, eigentlich äh, weit draußen in den Vorbezirken, in den Vororten zu leben und zu wohnen. Äh, dadurch oft äh, auch äh, lange Wegstrecken in den Kauf, im Kauf nehmen, um zu ihrem Arbeitsplatz zu kommen. Und äh, das ist so die eine Sache äh, dabei, diese lange Wegstrecke. Die andere Sache dabei ist natürlich, äh, dass äh, dabei vieles sozusagen am sozialen Engagement, am sozialen Leben verloren geht, äh, da man vielleicht nicht mehr so viel Zeit hat für äh, Kinderbetreuung, für, für äh, Lebenspartner oder andere Freizeitgestaltungen, äh, die man also hier gerne äh, haben möchte. Das heißt, für uns ist es ganz, ganz wichtig, dass es auch möglich sein muss, in den Städten, äh, in den Zentren hier äh, auch leistbares Wohnen anzubieten. Ich nehme an, es ist schon viel gesprochen worden, auch äh, vielleicht auch schon viel gesprochen worden über das, was wir hier in Wien machen oder in Österreich machen mit sozialem Wohnbau, wie wir versuchen hier äh, die Mietpreise, äh, auch wenn sie hier in Wien und äh, in Österreich steigen, aber trotzdem in äh, noch halbwegs erträglichen Ausmaß äh, zu halten. Hier wird viel äh, unternommen, hier gibt es viel Engagement, äh, das sich natürlich auch lohnt, weil wie gesagt, es für uns schon wichtig ist, dass die Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmer, auch die, die für diese Stadt arbeiten, die für diese Stadt ja hervorragende Leistungen erbringen, äh, zentrumsnah hier auch äh, tatsächlich wohnen können und leben können. Äh, was äh, äh, auch noch ist äh, für uns als Gewerkschaft, äh, als Interessensvertretung, ist natürlich Wohnen ein Menschenrecht. Es ist ja auch äh, seit äh, über äh, 50 Jahren ja auch äh, als Menschenrecht äh, verankert. Wir wissen aber, dass Gegenteiliges passiert. Wir wissen, dass äh, äh, vielfach und leider auch die Europäische Union keine Gelegenheit ausnutzt äh, und auslässt und äh, in Wirklichkeit äh, dem, dem Marktgeschrei nachgibt, wobei die Frage ist, wo ist denn tatsächlich ein Markt, wenn ich wie in einigen Städten bis zu 20 Jahre auf eine Wohnung, auf eine Gemeindewohnung, auf eine öffentliche geförderte Wohnung tatsächlich warten muss. 
Wir haben hier als Gewerkschaft ein hohes Interesse, dass dem Einhalt geboten wird und können hier die Europäische Union gar nicht verstehen, dass man hier bei so einem grundlegenden Thema wie Wohnen als Menschenrecht hier versucht, nur den Märkten nachzugehen. Wir kennen die Beispiele, aber ich nehme auch an, dass die hier alle kennen, wie sie in Skandinavien gelebt werden, also Schweden vor allem. Wir kennen die Beispiele, wo die Europäische Union versucht hat, in, Finnland einzugreifen, in, in, in Holland einzugreifen. Wir haben auch die, die, den, den Vorstoß, der in Frankreich passiert ist, wo ja die französische Regierung gesagt hat, das ist eine innerstaatliche Angelegenheit und hat eigentlich die Europäische Union nicht zu tangieren. Also viele, viele Themen, die hier zum Thema Wohnen hier kommen und, und, und dazugehören. Wie gesagt, für uns muss im Vordergrund stehen als Interessensvertretung leistbares Wohnen. Für uns muss im Vordergrund stehen hier, dass sich die Europäische Union eigentlich anders verhalten müsste, als er das heute tut, in Wirklichkeit den sozialen Wohnbau hier mit unterstützen und mit fördern. Und natürlich, wenn es zu einer europäischen Bürgerinitiative kommt, werden wir das als Gewerkschaft, als Interessensvertretung unterstützen. Ich glaube, das reicht einmal voll. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Christian. So th this is very good starting from the human rights perspective indeed and, 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 and highlighting the importance on, on some fields like which are not always taken into account indeed. What the cost does it generate in terms of mobility if you don't have good uh, housing for uh, the workers in, the, in, in cities? So someone who also knows the big challenges involved in providing uh, affordable uh, uh, housing, uh, Cedric von Stevendal. Uh, president of, of Housing Europe, so for those of you who don't know pre, uh, Housing Europe, uh, it's a federation of social, public and cooperative housing in, uh, in Europe. They uh, represent around 43,000 uh, housing uh, providers and uh, uh, around 10% of the total housing stock uh, in, in Europe. Cedric, tell us, how do you do this? You have to provide uh, housing at an affordable rate. You have to construct housing, you have to renovate, you have to uh, shelter homeless if possible, middle incomes. Uh, how do you do it and what do you ask from the EU? And, and in 10 minutes, is it? Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, 10, he said. He said me 10 yesterday evening. <laughs> Um, first, it is an honor to be here today to speak in the name of Housing Europe, of course, uh, of the EU legislation in addressing our uh, housing crisis. Uh, it is also an honor to be in a city, in a country, uh, which proves that with the rights policy we can work together with policy makers and public housing providers like, of course, Vienna Wohnen, but also cooperative and social housing providers uh, like Social Bo. Uh, and it is finally an honor to be in a city which uh, relies the link between social peace and affordable housing and act on it. From the impressive number of participants we see here today, it is clear that Vienna is an example for the entire world. Sorry. I just hope, uh, as we observed a lot of countries which are taking worrying direction, it won't be the only one and the last. Like you know, the village Gaulois, Obelix, and Asterix, French, <laughs> French dog. But uh, uh, that's a hope for me because uh, um, one year ago in our annual report, we said that Austria and France are the two last countries in which we develop a lot of social and affordable housing. And this year, uh, just Austria. <laughs> that's a pity. Uh, so, uh, what is the scope of the challenge? Uh, some previous speakers, of course, today have obviously addressed this time bomb in our society. That is a growing lack of affordable housing. Alfu grow has returned to big part of our continent. This grow is leaving many behind and our societies are increasingly unequal. Similarly, the recent recovery in housing market is far from benefiting everyone. More concretely, we talk about price on this morning. But we doesn't, what does it mean for people? Housing has become the highest expenditure for European citizens. One of 10 spend more than 30% of all of their income to house themselves. And four of 10 uh, of European below the poverty line are overburdened by housing costs according to Eurostat. Second point. House prices are growing faster than income, and you said that exactly the same, so it's not necessary that I develop. Third point, territorial divide is alarming as finding adequate and affordable housing in place where job opportunities are is increasingly hard. And 
as the level of housing construction is still low, even in uh, a lot of countries in Europe, especially major cities face a structural housing shortage reinforced by recent waves of migration, of course. And finally, climate change is alarming. The housing sector is major user of energy and material. We cannot keep approaching uh, housing policy with the tool of the past. In such a co-productive process, public, cooperative and social housing providers are the key to unlock the full potential of our city. What we offer Housing Europe? Uh, first, we offer Grow for All. Social, cooperative and public housing providers do promote a variety of housing options for various target groups and housing needs. We offer Communities for All. Social, cooperatives and public housing providers are partners for city urban and rural communities that can help deal with the most pressing challenges like urban sprawl. Third, not only a roof, of course, social, cooperative and public housing organizations provide social, innovation, employment services, health services, quality of life, digital inclusion. And finally, leader in energy efficiency. We build nearly zero energy homes, renovate existing dwellings, and promote the production for, of renewable energy. Who are the housing providers I refer to? They are members of Housing Europe. You, you already present that, Sebastian, so it's okay. Uh, we invest each year 7 billion euro to, to renovate uh, housing. By providing new homes, renovating existing, once and constantly investing in communities, social housing organizations help to solve cost for society. Lack of adequate housing costs 198 billion euro each year. And we need 300 billion euro to address it in Europe. And when the Commission recognizes that we need around 150 billion uh, euro for social infrastructure investment, those 50 7 billion uh, for affordable housing, we finally agree on these key figures. We need around 50 billion euro each year in affordable and social housing uh, in Europe. We do not just provide affordable uh, homes, but also domiciliary care, additional service, management of over type of shelter accommodation. What do we need to continue and expand? Four main recommendations and 12 actions that I will present, of course, in detail, okay? Um, <laughs> Or not? No, in fact, I will, I will keep uh, some of them for the launch of uh, our European campaign in January. So just, just have uh, some teaser. There is four main directions. Stability for evolution. For example, the European Commission should encourage member uh, states to use the investment clause in stability and growth pact in order to make useful investment in housing and social infrastructure. Second point, cohesion for fairness. EU funding program, sorry, as recommended <laughs> in a housing partnership, because we write that with Sebastian yesterday, so he said, you have to say it before. Uh, sorry to, to miss that. <laughs> uh, second point, cohesion for fairness. EU funding programs have to support social and territorial cohesion for better housing. Use of EU funding program and regional fund to support capacity building as well as housing organization. We need to get out there and hear what is blocking us of finance and fund. Housing Partnership also recommend to use the e-fund to support exchange and share of knowledge between housing professionals. Third point, flexibility for progress. EU tax, competition and internal market rules have to be supportive of the investment effort made by social, cooperative and public housing organizations. Full respect of the autonomy of member states and local authority to define, finance and organize social housing sector. And for a uh, last main point, action for fair transition. Climate objective can only be achieved through a mix between energy saving and production of renewable energy. Social cooperative and public housing organizations should be further supported in leading the way forward. For example, support, combina support combination of energy efficiency with production of renewable energy in order to increase comfort and reduce CO2. And lastly, the most important mission, the target line used for this conference, Housing for All. This needs to be our common objective, our common goal. Here we see that Housing Europe member alone cannot address this system failure, which is more and more evident. The system failure, which is causing growing human suffering, 
growing environmental problem, growing division in our society. I come from France, you know, yellow jacket, you know. <laughs> Therefore, we value, no, it's not so, it's not so funny, you know, it's very hard uh, at the moment. And of course, the question of how many money you spent in your home is uh, at the heart of the problem, not only the gasoline in the car. Therefore, we value the work uh, of this partnership which bring together national and local authority, but also the International Union of Tenants, which in a world private, where private rental sector is the fastest growing sector, is a vital partner uh, in beating housing exclusion. This partnership also must link with other partnerships, such as, such as that addressing urban poverty, like colleague of Fianza, and integration of migrants to reach its full potential. The key message uh, from Europe must be invest in affordable housing is the best return on investment for Europe. And to conclude, let us not lose the momentum after this impressive event. We will be driving this message home at the International Social Housing Festival in Lyon from the 4th to the 8th of June. Be there together. Let's change the housing paradigm. One of the events will be the third edition of the Responsible Housing Award, a joint initiative with, uh, with Housing Europe and the International, housing, uh, International Union of Tenants. Sorry. We'll, we will celebrate uh, responsible housing providers as, of course, we need to bring maximum attention to those being failed by the housing system. And Leilani Farah is doing a great job on this. Hope she can come. Uh, I, I will. I, I should have a meeting with her. It's why I'm not here. You know, I tried to convince her to join her to join us in Lyon uh, in June. Uh, it's it's somewhat okay. Um, those affordable uh, social, public, cooperative, and community-led housing providers, including this excellent example, which is Vienna Vonen, of course. We will bring in cities together to support the policies recommendation outlined about and those outlined by the housing partnership where Housing Europe has been an active partner over the last three years. Those cities who believe that smart city without affordable housing are dumb city finally. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Cedric, and, uh, and I think uh, well done for the race <laughs> against the clock. Uh, you've done it. And thank you for the invitation to meet in Lyon indeed next year, which it will be kind of a continuation of the event we are uh, having today. And, and part of this movement, we really want to start up around, around social and affordable housing. Yes, and I, as we are in advance, we have the authorization for, from the organization to present a film at the end of the indeed. round table. So there will okay. be a sh yes. short movie. So we just have to say what you want to show the film and you can do that. In but the, at the end. Okay, okay. We will have a short preview. It's all about product placement. <laughs> <laughs> so you already uh, mentioned a couple of times uh, the tenants. So Barbara, uh, welcome uh, as well here. Barbara, well, uh, has uh, been playing a very active role as well in the uh, housing partnership uh, of the uh, urban, uh, urban agenda. Um, so... Uh, you're a member of the executive uh, committee and head of the EU office for the uh, International Union of, of, of Tenants. And um, I think this, this morning, I don't know if you heard it, the lady from the, from the UK who was uh, very proudly telling how uh, back in the days uh, uh, under Margaret Thatcher that the tenants actually organized themselves and, and opposed uh, the buy to right. And very successfully, uh, indeed. Um, one of the points on, on the, on the, in the preparation in the slides you, you, you present, of, so on the co consumer perspective, I don't like too much the term consumer because if we we're talking about human rights, we shouldn't be talking about consumers, more residents, or in your case, tenants, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you want to change the DNA of the landlords. Tell us more about that, please. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Um, well, first of all, um, I also appreciate um, we are tenants and consumers. So we are the consumers of the housing markets. But indeed, we have a contract with our landlord, and this is a legal thing. So we are landlords and tenants, and this is what we also prefer as a name. Well, uh, changing the DNA of landlords. Um, well, a big thing to do, I guess. But um, perhaps I point out what I mean with this. Um, there is a reason that we are here in Vienna. And the reason is that um, from the tenant's point of view, I think a lot of good things have been implemented here. 
many, many years ago, decennia ago, but Vienna never stops to get better. And this is something which is obviously, if it is like this, in the DNA of the city of Vienna as a landlord. And this is very, very unique. You may say it is a unique selling point that you have in Europe, that they are so proud of what they are doing, that they think about how can we be even better by empowering the residents. Because this is actually what responsible housing, in our opinion, so the tenants' union's opinion, is all about. Empowering the residents and the tenants. So this is more than just providing a roof over your head. It is about creating chances, creating work, creating training, helping, helping also in concrete cases with rent arrears. There is a unit here in Wiener Wohnen and um, they are really dealing with the issue if you cannot pay your rent. There are always reasons for that. There can be a divorce, there can be an illness. There are always reasons for this because this is uh, my experience from the tenants' union's point of view. What you do first is, in all circumstances, you pay your rent in order not to lose your home. So um, this is what I mean with changing the DNA of landlords, saying if you are a good and responsible landlord, then you do even more. You go the extra mile. You try to have a special position also for your tenants and help them. And this is something special and um, in that case I would like to really thank um, one person especially. She is the CEO of uh, Wiener Wohnen. Her name is Karin Ramsa. She must be here somewhere. I can see her because of all the uh, flashlights. But um, she is doing an incredible good job which is really, really, yeah, I think one of the best practices we have in Europe. Cedric said it. We are collecting those best practices and we want to bring them on the stage because we can say, okay, landlords have to change, but we also have to say how they could change. And these best practices will be displayed. We will check it out. We will evaluate very sharply and tell you one secret, the jury of the Responsible Housing Award, Cedric is just talking about, we are doing together. It has a majority of tenants representatives. <laughs> So, uh, also uh, Arbeiterkammer, always good uh, to be in a good position institutionally, right? So, um, this is what we are going to do and I think we will find some really inspiring examples for you. So, um, this is also my appeal to you. Join the European Responsible Housing Awards if you have a story to tell and the story is empowerment of tenants. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Barbara. Now, I'd like to move on now to, to you, uh, Rui. Uh, welcome, uh, Rui Franco, Deputy City Councilor of uh, Lisbon. Lisbon is also one of those cities really fighting to uh, implement this, uh, this, uh, this right to housing, uh, uh, increment also the amount of affordable housing in, in, in the city. Also one of those uh, fighting cities, as you might say, like, like Barcelona, uh, um, that's... Uh, I guess we want to get at the, at the level of, of Vienna in, in, in terms of affordability. Um, I, um, I want to discuss with you and have a question about, uh, we heard this morning the mayor uh, of Vienna, Ludwig, say that the future of uh, Europe lies uh, in the cities. But a lot of those cities actually that are very popular, like Lisbon, beautiful city, uh, have a lot of difficulties uh, to, to achieve this uh, because there are very high pressures from the market. Can you share with us what kind of measures you've taken and uh, what you have been doing in this housing partnership to see how the EU level can help? Yes, uh, of course. Good afternoon Thank to you. everybody. Um, cities have different uh, history and economic, well, and social background. Uh, um, Lisbon, well, uh, special and social housing is, is quite different from, from Vienna or other cities uh, uh, involved. And just before getting to the present economical pressure, uh, we do have about 20% of the housing stock as what we call municipal owned uh, social housing. Uh, radical difference is, is that it, it is like income based rent, meaning that although it is open for anyone to apply to, to access it, it is 
order and it's given to the, the lowest uh, uh, or the most needed ones being the, the income the most uh, 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 relevant uh, factor. Uh, and that differently from almost any other European uh, ho social housing system, the rent is a dynamic rent automatically linked to, to the family's income and never, never more than 11% of the, of, the, of the household uh, uh, income. So it's basically the 20% the lowest uh, uh, income uh, families uh, from, from Lisbon. Uh, before moving to the, the economic, our political uh, objective now is to double that, this with what we call a, a social, uh, uh, an affordable housing scheme me targeting all those that cannot that are not deprived enough to be able to access our social housing scheme but also too far away from the 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 market uh, sale and, and rental uh, prices which is then due to the to what you well going back to to what you were asking so, so you're working in different levels right we're working yeah. in different levels and as, as cedric was also saying like it is uh, too simple it is too simple to say that the answer is just in one answer to, to what is a very complex uh, uh, problem, and this is true uh, uh, everywhere in Europe still. The, um, what is happening now in Lisbon, uh, uh, and it's also relevant to say that we've, we've faced uh, 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 an economic crisis, uh, a debt crisis, and we tackled that uh, uh, differently from what we were told. Uh, and it has proven to be more successful than, than just to follow the, the, the finance uh, interests of, of, of controlling uh, public expenditure. And we did, the up, we did as best as we could to do exactly the opposite. And it, it is proven that it, it's way more successful than, than any austerity uh, policy. Still. Uh, told, told by who uh, exactly? Well, the, the, the numbers tell it, like the, uh, our growth but you, level... But you were told to, to do certain th uh, uh, changes, uh, and, but you did it your way? Uh, you were On the memorandum of understanding of the, of the Troika, who was trying to, well, which had an agreement to fund the, the recovery so of the... We're talking the about the Euro European level. Uh, which includes the European level. Right, which okay. includes okay. the European level. Yeah. Uh, still, um, well, that, that would be a whole debate just around it, but... Reality is that Lisbon is specially attractive. The growth that has been facing, it, is, it makes it even more attractive. And both to tourism, which is growing by 20% a year for, for several years in, in, in a row. And also because it is attractive and real estate is part of the tourism equation, then it's also attractive for, for, for real estate for an investment. And then we begun this spiral, a self-fed spiral course where uh, the or finalization of the of the of the, the real estate which mainly is is the the housing stock which makes the the price is not being defined by 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 real cost or even by by local purchase power but by by how profitable it is and who is attracted to to invest there and to have more profit on top of profit over there that so we face a serious, serious challenge on how to rematch uh, uh, rents uh, with, with salaries. So a local salary cannot afford a private local rent by far. This is, needs to be uh, very clear. So how are we uh, approaching this? As many other countries, the cities and the city of Lisbon didn't, up to just last September, had the power to regulate or to license uh, uh, tourism uh, platforms like, like Airbnb, Booking.com and, and, and many others. We claimed that and we finally did. Uh, we, we, we suspended all, all new licenses, but what is relevant for the discussion which we finally now have the opportunity to open is how to create uh, uh, smart tools to oblige uh, uh, the tourist sector and the IT sector, which is also booming in Lisbon, to contribute to a more cohesive society and how can we capture value of the growing industries like real estate to the sustainability of the city, which obviously includes uh, uh, social housing. What's the EU uh, 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 role in this? Is that if we don't act together as cities and then together change the, the EU regulation approach, we will never 
be able to impose international or multinational companies like Airbnb, just to give an example. They are, of course, they have a, a significant responsibility on this, but they are not alone. And uh, uh, like, uh, like the UN uh, rapporteur was saying this, this morning, that the real estate strong investors are, are even more responsible on, on what's happening. Um, to oblige them to have European and, and local residents so that they would comply with, with, the, with the European and local laws, that they will pay taxes here, and that they, that they can more easily be imposed uh, 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 local regulations, but on the same time, from let's say like a tenant perspective, also to 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 be imposed to 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 comply with 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 quality and consumption uh, 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 claims uh, uh, and so on. Lisbon alone wouldn't be able to do this. Let, let's face it, uh, 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 and this is something that if we don't act together, we will never we will never get there. And EU has been given a, an example on how. When we are together, I'm just remembering like the like the Google uh, uh, court cases and 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 fines and uh, over. We wouldn't do it. We wouldn't be able to do it if we don't stick together. And housing is not less important than than digital technologies. Um, and this is also true for, of course, for the EU regulation, but also for for the enforcement uh, uh, itself. A couple of other things that we have been working together here on the, on the housing partnership is on the relevance of a, a revision of a new definition and justification on what is uh, affordable. And uh, it is stated, it is, it is written, that anything more than 25% of the, the, the family or the person's income is too much to be spent on, on housing. And it, it is very relevant to, to have this, not only for the, the whole design of the, of the sector, but also to say that when it doesn't happen, which is often happens in cities and in capital cities for sure, uh, is because we are doing something wrong. And we are doing something wrong is also about the lack of regulation and the lack of, of support of the state. So what we state is that when this is not met, and it's often not met today, is because we as Europe, we as states, we as regions, and we as cities are missing our role. Um, I was also asked to, to comment something on, on the co-production and, and uh, uh, so involving uh, tenants and, and the beneficiaries, so users of the housing in, in, the, in the new social housing and, and affordable housing production. We have some very, well, uh, I like to believe that we have some nice examples in, in Lisbon, uh, which, we, which we visited together and studied together, uh, of course, uh, as much as, as other cities that we've been working with during these this three years. But it's also about specificity of the... We cannot make a, a project in Brussels, which is optimum as much as in Lisbon as, it, as in Vienna. It doesn't work. Uh, the, even the climate uh, uh, is, is different. Uh, but what's relevant uh, from, from our city uh, ex recent experience is that, well, we have, uh, uh, as I was saying, like uh, about 25,000 uh, house units owned by, directly by the city, uh, built mainly in the 80s and in, in the 90s, in a very short period of time, uh, to relocate people from, from previous uh, slam areas of, of, of the city. Uh, so it was... We now know, we have decades, a couple of decades of experience of, on this major part of our stock, which were built too fast, not concerning the tenants' cultural and sociological needs, but also not understanding uh, uh, what the costs of, of what such a design would provoke in, in the city's uh, uh, budget. And reminding again that we uh, uh, charge a social rent, so income-based rent, so just to give an idea, of course, the, 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 the sellers in Lisbon are, are lower than in, than, than in Vienna, but, well, you, you can still compare them. And the average social rent in Lisbon is below 70 euros a month. Right? So, and this is never more than 11% of that, those families' income, so you can also have an idea on what families' income we are t or target group we are talking about. Um, and so, but uh, on one perspective, getting closer to Barbara, is, the, is how 
inappropriate those houses were built for the, the, the specific needs of this specific public, or, which means the, the tenants is not, well, the tenants. And on, on the other hand, getting closer to, to Cedric, the, <laughs> that the, 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 the unbalanced, the unproportioned cost that we have on the maintenance and keeping of all those buildings because of their lack of quality, because they were building with high-rise buildings with huge uh, consumptions and maintenance costs on, on lifts and the, the infrastructure, pumping water, everything, it's, it makes no sense. Like the city spends more than 100 million euros a, a year just on the maintenance of, of these buildings, just on the gap between maintenance costs and, uh, and the social rent. So what we've discussed and what, what we've learned with this uh, co-designing process that we, we tested earlier in the, in, the, in the very specific district, but it has been replicated uh, among other, uh, other uh, districts with high concentrations of, of social housing, of municipal housing, is that we are, well, these two guys are together. Uh, 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 <laughs> meaning that we were able to design with them between the architects between the, 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 the residents in, in, in themselves, and they were in the majority at, at, at the jury selecting and discussing the technical options and the stuff, is that we were able to build way less expensive houses to build with way more quality, lower density, typically, way more flexible, adaptable to the, 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 the family size change, uh, uh, with way less consumption of water, electricity, reusing water from this and that. Uh, uh, but which also has almost, almost zero maintenance costs. Like right. typically imagine a building where houses are, are used and felt almost, uh, almost as, as uh, one family house unit, like directly to the street with public gardens and so on, but not having one energy or, or consumption meter, which is held by, in our case, by the municipality. And this is radical, well, the, the project is, is public and can be seen, the, these people have seen it, of course, but the level of satisfaction of those people which are now already living in this new uh, social de uh, uh, housing design approach, uh, 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 the satisfaction is, is immense and the cost is way, way below, uh, lower, which means that we are also now able to, to build way more. Um, and I think that's I've, I've run out my well, time. Yes, uh, thank, thank you very it. much, uh, Rita. It was a really good explanation, also of the of the role uh, a city like like Lisbon has, and uh, not only in managing itself and initiating itself, but also taking the uh, into account the interest of the tenants, of the residents, but also thinking how uh, cost effective it should be to maintain and to build new neo housing and then to bring those two two parties uh, together to get even better and more efficient results. Just to make well. Uh, 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 the information can be uploaded, I imagine, on the, on the website of the, of the, the conference, but uh, we are building houses which the, the cost per square meter is, bil is, uh, is around 600 uh, euros. And uh, so the average cost of the house is between like 40 and, and 70 something thousand euros per unit with yeah. almost no maintenance yes. after. Yeah, yeah. And the construction cost in, in Portugal and Lisbon is not lower than in Austria. Yes. Yeah. And the quality of the houses is, is definitely not not low standards at all. And I've been visiting them and they looked very nice uh, in, in, indeed as well. So that's, uh, that's also very important for, for, for the residents. Now, let's go to Michaela. <laughs> I don't need, think I need to introduce you. Uh, everyone uh, by now uh, knows that you are uh, one of the driving powers uh, behind the, the housing partnership. We, we can say so on behalf of, of, of Vienna. And, um, so we have heard here some, some, from some practices. How can we make sure that all this knowledge that is being developed, that has been developed uh, for, for decennia in, 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 in cities, but is, is still going on, how can we exploit it more? How can we share it more uh, to get even better results at the, at, the, at the European level? We don't have to invent the wheel all by ourselves every time, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. And I must admit that Sebastian has really been a very important member in our partnership. And uh, we are happy that we could win you to moderate the session. So we are again with you together. It's because we always want to have the family together. So this is, this is our approach. Thanks, Sebastian. Now, just for on the knowledge, I think a lot is known by cities. Cities are very clever and unique and wonderful organisms. And they find solution even in very, very difficult circumstances. And we are, even if it, we just have to look across the European border, where people, cities are living in, under really, really deep, deep 
uh, misery and very they don't even have the possibility to to steer what's going on in their in their territory because they don't even have governance systems like, like we know them in, in 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 classical European rule of law uh, uh, consensus so so really I think cities even if they're really bad off develop a lot of creative and innovative and very integrated solutions and I think that Sharing the knowledge about that, especially in the field of housing, is something you can you, is always useful. I just want to do another product placement. I'm sorry, um, because it has not been commented enough. But it's a product of our partnership, and it's a product that we again owe to municipal housing in Vienna, to Wiener Wohnen, and our friend Susanne Bauer, who has been the editor in chief of the brochure that you have found. I hope everybody has found the brochure a guidance paper on housing policies in cities, uh, uh, which, which has been produced extra by the partnership, but also by the Wiener Wohnen for this conference. And in this brochure, you will find something that we think is important to share. Because during the time of our partnership, of course it was important to see what cities need. And so when we identified what are the core issues in urban housing policy, uh, we said it's very clear, we need to build new housing and we need to build it in a socially, environmentally and financially sustainable way. We need to renew existing housing uh, and that accounts for a lot of situations and we even have to confront and it's written in our action plan, in some cases all over Europe we have seen that also in, in Lisbon, the necessity to destruct housing which is re demolish housing which is simply not able to fit the need uh, of e ecological, social and health uh, requirements anymore. We have to have, take this decision at some point in some cities sometimes and it will be very hard for those cities to take that decision, I think. So existing housing has to be renewed. Uh, new housing has to be built. But it's never enough to think only about one, one house, one building. We also, and Rui has explained it very well and we have been visiting these kind of uh, projects also in Rotterdam, for instance, when we were there with our meeting. Uh, with a partnership meeting, you have to build a community. It has to have, you, your, your, your home is not enough if there is not a community around it and the community is just more than technical infrastructure because it's the people that make up the community. So it's doing it together with the tenants. And this is also something where we, we found out during the time of our partnership that Bratislava can learn from Rotterdam and Rotterdam can learn from from Lisbon and we can exchange much better if we have the right tools for that. Part of the tools is of course such a brochure which is easy to see uh, what's going on. The last two things that we found out that are really important for cities as well when it comes to do, do housing policy is of course how do you set up uh, a municipal housing scheme that also guarantees that you find the building ground. The building ground, the land is something we have been discussing it the whole day. It's core. It's core to the construction costs, to the overall housing costs. If you do not secure affordable building ground for your affordable housing projects, you're already in a bit of a trouble, in a big trouble, I would say. Uh, so this is also land use and building ground is really something where we have been working a lot. We have developed a lot of uh, examples around what we saw, uh, today heard from Vienna with the zoning law, with the two-thirds of each new development project that has to be assigned for social and affordable housing. There is a lot of other instruments that city, cities have developed. We know about urban development contracts. We know about different aspects of zoning laws. Quota, which you can, for certain areas of the city, where you, which you can set to say, okay, this is, uh, you can set quota for building a certain number of social or, or, or cooperative housing. So there is a whole set of activities we have been proposing to people to choose out of the box if this is a approach to create in their context, in their governance system, to use it and to make good use of it in the sense of affordable housing and social housing construction. The last two things that we really found out is really, apart from land use, is a lot of cities are in quest of how do we do it? How do we set up something like Wiener Wohnen? How do we set up like a big uh, Sozialbau, like another municipal or cooperative co housing company? So our brochure also gives you answers to that. And because this is so important and we have been talking about housing as a human right, of course, some cities will have to start thinking about how do they set up tenant protection schemes? And how do they set up tenants protection organizations? In very many cases, we do, we do not have that. 
or very small ones. And then you need also maybe sometimes the state or the city to help with that. This is something we clearly also propose in our partnerships action plan, that you need to have, if there is a right to be protected as a consumer, there also has to be an institution where you can you enforce that right, meaning really uh, uh, very easy to access tribunals where you can settle disputes, which is not that the co where you'll need lawyers again to settle that for you, but we, because they are expensive and you have to pay them. But you also have to have really easy access to those kind of uh, dispute settlement institutions. This is something we, we strongly propose also as part of our set of recommendations on good housing policy. To develop that, we are, of course, now asking for and, and trying to find partners. And if you are here in the room and interested in the, what I'm going to tell you next, uh, an exchange program which we want to set up uh, quite soon in the frame of Urbakt, which is a, a, a tool which is very useful for cities, uh, where we want to exchange on how do we set up ex uh, municipal housing schemes. So we are planning that now because the next call is going to be in January, so call me fast. Um, but we really are in, in search of, you know, developing even more on all these good practices and of these good examples for good policies, because we think that in the end it will be maybe now another 30 months program for exchange of 10 cities. But of course we are, we are aiming at having stable exchange instruments and programs for cities, N not only on housing, but of course primarily on housing, because we think that it should be a big priority for everyone. But exchange is really something we are, we are thinking that learning from each other is also ha helping each other not to make the same mistakes as sometimes uh, have been done in the past. So this is, this is something we are really aiming at very much. And I give now, because I've been talking too much, uh, the, the microphone to Elena, because she will maybe talk about more about the data and monitoring, which is also important. Am I? Yes, well, so, I so we're that saving I the best for the last year. More about the Elena. messages of the <laughs> partnership to the European level, but anyhow, I'm going to speak. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, first, I would like to say that uh, this was a very good illustration that there are so many facets to affordable housing. There are so many perspectives, possible perspectives. There are so many different situations in which. Uh, certain good examples can't be translated directly. They need a sort of ta tailor mating uh, according to traditions, to, to frameworks. But first what we have learned, and this is the, the, main, uh, the main message to the European legisl uh, legis uh, legisl uh, legislation makers, uh, the times are very dynamic. The system of housing and the need for affordable housing is incredible. We can't just use the old-fashioned, very strict and non-flexible description of some aspects related to housing, like state aid rules, to really to be able to deliver what is needed now. And what is needed now is really much more new, affordable housing across Europe, mainly in the big cities. Secondly, it is important for the countries to agree on certain principles which are valid all over the Europe and actually all over the world. And there are very good examples. There is Geneva UN Charter on Sustainable Housing, which sets the, really all the aspects of sustainable housing, uh, how to put it on the national level. And uh, then there is really the role of the cities. We were discussing this morning mostly very active cities with very good experiences. Even if we, we, I'm listening to Lisbon, which is, uh, well, not the biggest uh, social housing provider in the world, but I come from Bratislava. Bratislava is uh, less than half a million city, it is the capital of Slovakia. We have 800 social housing units in Bratislava. There is no interest whatsoever on side of Bratislava for 15 years to do something in housing, in affordable housing. We have privatized. We, have, we, we are one of the country, one of many countries actually, uh, the new member states, who privatized everything which was affordable in the past. We are producing maybe 15,000 housing units a year in the whole country. Only 10% of that it is in segment of affordable housing. What shall we do? I think that uh, but, but when we were calling for these exchange platforms for cities, to learn from each other, to be inspired from each other. I think this is an extremely important element 
in keeping social cohesion across Europe. It's not only the question of the countries or of the cities, it's also really how we understand the role of European Union, of countries and of the cities. Uh, data, yes. Uh, when, we, when we are making policies on any level, European, uh, national, regional, local, uh, we should really do it on facts, based on facts and data. And we have found, and also other partnerships have confirmed, that unfortunately, uh, local data, municipal data, are very often not available. The sets of data which are being collected are not enough to make the really serious policy making uh, decision. And uh, to, uh, to change it, again, we need to approach plenty of many different partners. And now the success of implementation, it's a terrible word, but well, there it is, of our action plan lies in the fact that if we, whether we are able to find all those other partners who were not the members of the partnership, but unless they do their part of the, of the work proposed in actions, so nothing is going to happen. And we really do hope that we will be together able to find these people, to bring our enthusiasm to them, to persuade them that yes, it is well worth doing an extra work to change things for better because at the end of the day it pays back to all of us. So this was most what we wanted to sell. Yeah? yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. So that's a, that's a clear call from, from Elena and I guess the rest of the housing partnerships to only make it, this, this movement uh, bigger. Uh, we can use all the support now to implement. There are 12 uh, 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 points in the, uh, in the action plan, so there's still a lot of work uh, ahead. And uh, so uh, this is uh, unfinished business. This is still only the beginning, I, I, I guess. And, uh, and I really hope from my side that we can increment uh, the, the exchanges at European level uh, uh, for housing. What I want to do, we have still some time now, uh, maybe some questions from the audience. So there is a lady there uh, in the back. One or two questions still? Is there a mic? Yeah. Hello, my name is Rita Silva. I'm from Abita in Portugal. We struggle against evictions. Uh, I'm missing something here in the discussion connected with what Leilani Farhad said in this morning. She talked about the financial funds, the big owners, the private equity. So we are talking about huge um, structures that now operate at transnational level. So uh, my question, and I think this is one of the major problems as she pointed out in her presentation. My question is, uh, I think that this needs to be addressed by the European Union because the member states alone or the municipalities cannot do it alone. So I would like to ask how the European Union should do it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I think Michaela, yes. Thanks for the question because I think it was really uh, moving everybody in the room when we heard the data tomorrow, this morning about, about the, this, this aspect of the, of, the, of the housing market and those, those real big, big global players that really affect our, our, our cities. Um, what we did in, in the partnership indeed is in fact we, we the, the set of recommendations with the one good housing policy is already a part of proposing regulations how you can counteract on local level. I think that what we did on spatial planning and building ground is part of the answer which you can give on the local city level. What of course is left to be done but I must admit that uh, we are like we have been together for three years and we touched some priority themes in this partnership. But this is also something we, we were very much aware of and where we think that the next pieces of legislation which are coming when it comes to financial instruments, solvency, Basel, this is really going to be hard stuff. This was, was really something where we said that this is beyond our capacity as a current partnership and we need to tackle this by other means, but we are of course happy to find partners yeah. in that quest as well. I, I know, Rita. Uh, We'll, we'll ask something again, but uh, I would like to add before she does. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the, the, the most acute things that we need to do. And what, when we say uh, we are just in the very beginning is because 
Next May, there will be European elections. And it is our role, and it's not just a partnership. The partnership is just trying to show data and to support this discussion, that we need to change European policy on housing, and that this is, as, as you're, you, yourself you were saying, a city or even a country very hardly can, can tackle uh, uh, super economic funds like, like those mentioned in, in, in the morning. But we, we, de we do need to change European policy and then regulations and, and, and tax uh, 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 on those funds. Of course, we have ideas about it, but it, it will be the European Parliament, it, it would be the European Council and, and Commission to to, be, to, to have the power to enforce them. We will make the proposals. Of course, we are already starting our lobbying work on the, on the Parliament and, 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 uh, and the other European institutions. But this is just the beginning. Yeah. Thank you, Rui. And you, you mentioned the word here, lobbying. Uh, there, there is a very strong lobby uh, from the field of the speculative uh, f financial sector. Um, but we also have some lobbying power on our side, indeed, with, uh, well, Housing Europe is uh, represented in, uh, in, in Brussels. IUT is there. Vienna is very present. So uh, do not understand that. You, you wanted to add something, Barbara? I also wanted to add something um, which might be a, a kind of shared responsibility between Europe and also um, the national uh, legislators. Um, you see, we have at the moment, we have also very big mergers at the real estate markets. So um, big investment funds are buying the affordable and social housing stock because you can still make a lot of profit with it. When you take a look at the financial market, the interest rates are very low at the moment. So housing is interesting. So in many, many of these big mergers, we have, in fact, um, a national legislation problem because if they merge, they don't even pay real estate taxes. They're exempted from that. Yeah. So this is what I call a clear tax evasion. And I have not heard actually a real answer on the European Commission about that. You know, we are talking a lot about uh, state aid cases and uh, competition law, internal market, but I never heard anything from the European Commission about that. So that might be worse also to um, take a look um, on is this really in the framework of the European legislation. So I think this is uh, something we should do for the future and um, we will be happy as tenants unions to contribute because we are actually collecting data about those big mergers and um, we may contribute with some information towards commission but also to national governments. Thank you, Barbara. Time. Yeah. Thank you. One last very short question and a short answer, please. Yes. It's, it's more a compliment than a question. <laughs> My name is uh, Erik Maasa. I'm a member of uh, Wonbond, the uh, Dutch uh, mem uh, Union of Tenants. And we have had a difficult relationship with the European Union for the past, I would say, <laughs> 10 years. Uh, because we've had the Dutch case, which limited the uh, access of social housing for middle incomes yeah. enormously. We've been battling it since and I think today is the first day that I've been at a meeting organized by European Union or a body related to the European Union that actually was in favor of social housing and against the state aid reg uh, regulations. I really needed this. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so very short uh, question. I'm Joseph Hagedus from uh, Hungary. Uh, my, my question is that uh, what is the uh, good or optimistic perspective of your uh, action plan for the new member states, uh, cities in new member states? And, uh, this was the, the, the idea of the, the study that, that is maybe should be other strategy in a country which has a GDP of the one third of the Western uh, countries and have a social housing stock in one or two percent of the total stock. Thank you very much for your question, uh, Josef. I think, uh, well, Elena is the person who can uh, answer. Yes. Uh, I think that uh, this recommendation to have this permanent exchange is the indirect answer on your question because uh, as, we, as we have noticed in our analysis there are really uh, in general speaking two different situations in housing across Europe. 
according to ownership structure and also behavior of the cities against uh, well, or the level of activity of the cities in solving housing situations. And uh, we do believe that it is not possible to prescribe that you must do something. For example, in Slovakia it wouldn't be possible because we have decentralized and uh, self-government is uh, actually really self-government and it's up to them to decide what are their priorities. We as a state can offer certain possibilities. In our case, we offer possibilities of 100% of uh, financing of affordable housing. But uh, surprisingly, uh, the cities, which would be uh, certainly the, the most uh, probable addressees of this subsidy and loan scheme, are not very interested. And the, the answer is yes, because we have privatized, the cities lost the tradition of being responsible for housing and to be responsible for housing, as everybody think, uh, is going to 